welcome to Canvas of the Heart presented by Free Arts for Abused Children of Arizona. The mission of Free Arts is to transform children's trauma to resilience through the arts. This show is a collection of conversations that spotlight the ways Free Arts creates hope for children and teens who've experienced abuse, neglect, or homelessness. We hope you find this show to be informative, inspiring, and fun. Welcome back, Jenna. Thanks, Mac. Happy to be back. How are things going? Things are great. Super busy right now. End of the year, the actual calendar year, just doing a lot, but it's great. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's the theme of our episode here, which we want to share with all of our viewers and listeners about the great things that have happened in 2023. And there's mm. a few that we're going to highlight, but that's not the whole list, right? So no, there's a so lot much. of positive things here. Um, so let's start with programs. Um, the big thing. <laughs> yeah, the big thing. I mean, it's important at Free Arts, we talk a lot about different elements of the work, mm -hmm. uh, but at the end, we have made a promise to the mm -hmm. community that we're going to serve. And, and our goals this year were somewhere around 6,000 kids mm -hmm. served. And so I'll just give us a rundown. Uh, we served in a variety of ways, 6,400 mm -hmm. uh, children, teens, and young adults. And more than half of those in a week-by-week -week mentoring relationship. Mm -hmm. um, the other half being something like a free art day, which we've talked about before, which is introductory. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think about what we accomplished in 2023 with programs, what comes to mind for you? For me, I think about, similar to what you just said, all of the different ways that we were able to engage with different children, teens, young adults, and families, thinking about how diverse we have been thinking about how creative we have been in terms of really going out there in the community, establishing new relationships, new partnerships. All of those things immediately come to mind when I just think about the success of surpassing our goal for the year. Yeah, we've met the goal. We surpassed it. We developed some new relationships. Um, I also think that it's been really fun to see uh, us return back to typical, right? Mm -hmm. So an important part of our overall narrative We'll talk more about this in a minute, but we've we've hit 30 years of operating. Yes. Um, but over that time period, we all experienced this cultural shock and the way we operate around the pandemic. And that was a mm -hmm. huge challenge for free arts and the way it operated. And as we started this year, where we we were new staff, we were learning Brand about new, the agency. Hit the ground running. <laughs> yeah. With this idea and quest to return back to typical with where we had left off in 2019 with the numbers and thousands served. Mm -hmm. um, and so returning back to that has felt good because uh, we're able to engage more volunteers. Mm -hmm. You know, we're onboarding them. Uh, you see orientations and training taking place mm -hmm. you know, 20 to 30 per month. And that's yes. an open invitation for all of our listeners and viewers. Please. Yep. We need you. You don't have to be a professional artist. You just mm -hmm. have to care about our cause and be mm -hmm. willing uh, to sit and uh, have that fun, but also creative experience of building, creating, you know, with the modes of art that we work with here. Yes. So that's an important thing to me is we're, we're functioning typically, right? Mm -hmm. And our, all of us experience that shock of, you know, lockdown and all the mitigation factors. Mm -hmm. And it's that been, really took a toll. It did. And mm -hmm. it was a challenge for a lot of our partners and who have congregate care settings. They have yes. to be very careful uh, about the spread of infectious uh, conditions and diseases. So we understood that, mm -hmm. but we're back. We're right? back. We're back and we're growing bigger. Um, and then in some areas, one of the themes we'll talk about too for the next year is about how some of our programs are, are focusing more deeply on certain things. And, and mm -hmm. one of those that I think is real key is the growth of what we do with families mm -hmm. and in the family program itself. So Tell us a little bit about what's happened with family program in the last year. Oh, so much because this program existed before we came on board. And I'm really excited about how much it has grown and really taken a life of its own. It's, it's gone from being what we would have called an expansion program and an, or an emerging program. And it's really like a core program. It's operating, functioning on, on its own. And, um, what we saw was that we recognized that a lot of the families that we were working with, and we're working with all families who have experienced some form of trauma um, 
including but not limited to family violence, homelessness, um, any type of um, forced or involuntary separation. But we also had a strong focus on foster kinship and adoptive families. And we really utilize what was at our disposal to try to bring some resources to them because what we recognize is there's a lot of um, emphasis on wanting to help children in the foster care system, but there's less available resources for the families once that child is out of congregate care. And so we recognize that. And so we wanted to be able to expand our programming because it's so hard. It's difficult when you, you're working with a family unit. So many working parts, so many um, dynamics, the different blends of families with adoptive um, children, adopted children, kinship children, or biological all in one house. And um, we saw where we were trying to bring our programs to them in a specific kind of way but recognize where maybe we might have been posing unintentionally some barriers to it. And so we constantly pivoted and kept moving and kept adjusting the program until we got the right fit. And we recognize that our family empowerment nights are thriving. Um, families coming out on a monthly basis to engage in some art and some dinner with us. Um, we recognize that the professional artist series, um, have, they were also a, a good hit. But what they really love, what the families really enjoyed were those free arts days. They really enjoyed those single day events to be able to de-stress, to connect with each other. And another aspect of it was the educational component, family breakout sessions that we had. And that was very special. That was extremely special for caregivers because they were able to not just uh, be transformed in the through the art process with the children in, in their families, but also able to be an adult and to connect with each other. I mean, over the course of this year, we have laughed with the caregivers. We have helped wipe tears away, crying with them as they were pleading and just pouring their hearts out for some of the challenges that they were experiencing, um, trying to navigate the system. And then we were able to see the level of support they had for one another. It was truly special this past year. Yeah, it's been great. What are the things they're saying when families mm -hmm. talk about the program? Mm -hmm. What are they saying to you? Oh, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> we've had several times where we wanted to do breakout sessions and the parents were like, no, can we continue doing the art? We want to do the art too. We want to drum too. It's like, I'm having themselves a good time. We've had um, some caregivers who have come in and they have said, this is what my family needed. Like my child or the child in their care is looking forward to this event. Um, we've had some caregivers who have expressed how they really just need some support in terms of, I don't know where to go. I don't know who to ask for this resource. Um, I just, can you, how, can you help me? Who are you connected to? And we were able to connect them. But overall, it has been such a positive response to everything that we have done. They're enjoying even the opportunities to go and explore um, at our cultural partners on their own, have a, a day at the museum that they probably never would have been able to go to otherwise. Excellent. So this is an example of us looking at the groups we've already mm -hmm. served and uh, discovering mm -hmm. and then experimenting in a way yes. with new ways to serve um, the people that have already been familiar with free arts. And there's two others. We've done mm -hmm. episodes on both of them, but mm -hmm. we're a year into looking at them, developing them and seeing them. So I wonder if you might touch on um, the progress with young adult empowerment and mm -hmm. also resilient roots. Yes. So for those who may not be familiar with um, the other two programs, the young adult empowerment program was originally started as the alumni program. And um, when we say alumni, that means um, any now adult, uh, young adult who previously engaged with our programs as um, a teen and have for various reasons has now exited the foster care system, but has still remained involved with us in some way. And that program is just, it's the beauty of that program is that we recognize we have a special population with those who previously connected with us, a special relationship with them. But there are so many other young adults who 
have not had the opportunity to engage with free arts, but could definitely benefit from what we're doing. So some of the things that we've been able to do in, in expanding this program to more young adults between the ages of 18 and 26 is being able to offer um, some more life skill based um, programming in addition to what is our core programming. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we've done is um, do almost like a, like a you and money kind of thing, because we recognize financial literacy is big. We don't live in one of the cheapest places in the United States. And it can be hard to try to navigate. How, how do you not, how do you learn how to budget? How do you learn expenses? And, The reason why we focused on that is because we recognize that one of the traumas that is very common within our population is living or experiencing poverty. And when you have had that experience, how how has that altered your mind? How does that alter the relationship that you have with money? And how can we help to um, get you to see a different version of that and have a healthier relationship with financing? Because we could give you all the money in the world, but if you don't know how to manage it, it's not going to be successful. And so through that, we've also recognized that sometimes we just need opportunities to exercise the skills that we want to build. So we have volunteer opportunities. We have um, paid opportunities like speaking engagements, outreach opportunities for um, our young adults to get out in the community and help us to form relationships while they're also forming relationships with other organizations themselves. And we love socializing so we also have our, our normal programming with Free Arts Days. Um, at, at this point in time, we've had the um, photography workshops, even glass blowing. So we've had some really amazing opportunities for young adults to be able to um, connect with us in a way that they may not have had that, ex- that opportunity to do so. Or um, just to be able to connect with other young adults in that are similar to them or had similar experiences as them. Uh, the Resilient Roots program, that program has just, I, I'm still always in awe of how much that program is just, I think that program started running before we did. It kind of took off without us and then we had to play catch up with it. But we have been um, serving the unaccompanied minor population for several years now. But this program was very unique in terms of we decided to take what we were already doing, but make it more of a, of a specialized program that specifically focused on incorporating the culture of the participants in it. Because we understand that culture is the buffer to, for adversity. And we understand that sometimes you have two extremes when you're um, fully uh, um, when you fully go through the process of acculturation or when you fully um, are simply embedded only in your culture. When you're on those two extremes, that's when you can experience distress from being in that extreme. So we want to be able to bring both together in the mix to help our uh, unaccompanied minor population to build the resilience that they need to build to withstand um, their current experiences. And that program has done so well in terms of having um, creativity nights, having that happen um, on a biweekly basis here. And it's so wonderful because the children who are coming, we're seeing new kids every time. It's not the same set of kids. So we're really impacting so many children through this program that I'm really excited to see what our numbers are going to be looking like at this time next year. That's awesome. So um, program goals, family program, development of young adult empowerment, resilient Mm -hmm. roots, these are going deeper. And then something we haven't talked about yet on this podcast Mm -hmm. is statewide expansion. So Mm -hmm. during its course of its history, uh, Free Arts has focused really on Maricopa County and Mm -hmm. mostly Phoenix, but Uh, As part of our strategic vision, we've wanted to expand throughout the state of Arizona. Oh, yeah. And that went this year from a wish to reality. Yeah, it's real. And um, we did that in some important ways. We used our um, contacts, our network, those Mm -hmm. that support us um, through planned giving. Um, We call it the Resilient Legacy Circle here at, at Free Arts that were in Prescott. And we normally have an annual meeting up there and we used some of their um, contacts, the people they knew, as well as those we knew in the community and created a reception. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, we met 30 new people in the community from schools to artists to other mm-hmm. nonprofits. And we resulted in getting 30 other people excited about free arts. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. So that was in August. So as we're talking about this, it's now the 1st of December. Um, and during that time period, we've been establishing new relationship. Mm-hmm. We've been part of one program opportunity for another group that mm-hmm. gave us uh, the opportunity to introduce ourselves to a lot of nonprofits and schools and mm-hmm. about 700 kids. Um, and we now are sitting here planning actively for uh, the first program's free art days Mm -hmm. Uh, in the early part of 2024. So Mm -hmm. this is exciting. The work that we need help with, and this is an invitation to all those listening, is we're going to need to build up a group of Mm -hmm. local volunteers who are ready to do mentoring week by week in our Mm -hmm. core programming. Mm -hmm. And we um, also are wanting to make sure that we are providing access to the kids in our our target population, those in some form of -of out-of-home care. And that means if you're in the Yavapai County area, which is pretty large, right? You can drive for an hour plus and still be and in, still be there. Still I, be I did Yavapai that, and County. I was like, "Wow, okay." <laughs> yeah, um, we need we need those connections. We need that help and support. So that's an area of focus uh, immediately. And we'll talk more about this in a moment when we talk about next year and the things we're excited about. Is we want to go statewide. There's some other areas we have in mind, but Prescott seemed to fit, and Yavapai County in particular because of the connections that we made and uh, we started there and building those uh, and we want that to continue. So Mm -hmm. uh, communities that welcome us, we're happy to do it. So that's another thing I'm really excited about here. And then I know the, uh, the fifth one you're real excited about is so in 2023, we brought back our agency conference and I'm I'm representing with the actual conference shirt today. Yes, the conference. So tell us about the conference and what that meant to be part of. If you missed it, I'm sorry. I am sorry because it was amazing. It was amazing. I was so excited to be able to be a part of that. I know we had so many people who came out. Um, people who just want to support our organization, those who were interested, um, partner agencies came out and we had such a wonderful time. The breakout sessions, those workshops were so informative and and it was just a wonderful experience and we were able to be our true selves when we did it. It was very artistic. We had the different drumming, we had the movement and I think it was it was so great to be able to really kind of kick off, you know, the 30th year of the organization, bringing back that conference. I think everything just aligned so wonderfully in a way that it was so beneficial to everybody who attended. Great success. Yeah, I loved the challenge of coming in and having your supervisor say, so there's this conference we used yeah. to pull off. Uh, I know you've been here about two weeks, but can, can you, you do it? Can you make that happen? <laughs> Uh, so that became one of the projects I worked on pretty quickly, and you mm-hmm. helped a lot with that. Um, and it was it's designed in the current structure to be a learning opportunity for mm-hmm. all artists and volunteers. Yes. We expanded our invites a little broader than that mm-hmm. and uh, got some uh, others to come to it, knowing that in the next year, we're going to have a different focus with it. Mm-hmm. We're going to do those things plus more, which mm-hmm. we'll talk about in a moment when we think about what we're excited about. But going backwards to the conference, I think it was helpful for us to really um, add in more depth around the clinical pieces and Mm complement those toward what we're doing with creativity and art. And So when you're at a free arts event, it's going to be immersive. You're going to be involved in it. A conference isn't sit and get when you come to free arts. No. It is involvement. It is learning. It is something that has a creative component and you're going to go away with some things you can put into place. And so um, we were pleased with uh, what the conference offered for people. I think our feedback was very good. Uh, It also was a sign that we're returning things Mm -hmm. as typical. So we offered it in person. We did it in the Metro Phoenix area. Same with next year. Uh, And those are things that we continue going forward because one of our vision statements is to be a leader statewide and nationally around how the transforming power of the arts can impact children who've experienced the trauma of abuse, neglect, and homelessness. And so part of that is learning. Part of that is receiving inspiration 
and connecting to others who are like-minded and, and building that sense of camaraderie that happens between agencies and other volunteers and our artists themselves. So the conference was definitely a highlight for myself. Um, the last thing we want to kind of brag about for 2023 is just the growth around public support. So mm, yes. if you've seen anything about free arts on social media at all this year, you've seen a lot of branding around our 30th. Mm -hmm. And so yes. we, we turned 30, we were founded in 1993, mm -hmm. uh, as the story goes in a driveway um, <laughs> rummage sale. And we're much more, you know, much more developed than that now, but vision starts somewhere and we're thankful for all of that kind of brought us together. And so we think about 30 years, you recognize the journey, but also know that there's still opportunity in front of us. And as much as I'd love to be idealistic and think that we're not in any place, you know, socially where children are ever being mistreated, we know that's happening. Mm -hmm. We know the and, reality. And we need to be prepared among many other providers in different ways to respond and to support uh, children, teens, and young adults who've had these experiences. So the 30th year culminated for us in our gala on the October 21st. Amazing. Uh, it amazing. Was, yeah. It, it had a masquerade feel. I think most people had some form of costume. Yes. And those who didn't still participated in making masks, like creating masks for themselves when they were there. But it was, we were worried about that because yeah. I was, I was on the committee for that and we were kind of nervous about how would people really feel about being in a costume to the gala? But I mean, I, I, I showed up totally in costume, but I'm so happy that everybody really allowed their, their inner child to show. Yes. And they really took advantage of um, the uh, pure imagination feel and they just ran with it. And it was amazing. Yeah. So we wanted to honor where the organization was at 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then it also took on another focus as we transitioned in leadership. Yes. And so that was a very uh, important way to signify that our work continues, that things are stable, and that we are recognizing the work of Alicia Sutton Campbell, who had been here on staff for 11 plus years, and it's leader for something like eight and a half. Um, and then welcoming in new board members and new volunteers mm -hmm. and having a sense of familiarity with what we do, and then also hearing about where we're going next, things like the programming we just talked about and statewide expansion. So our, our public support around that, I think, was uh, amazing to receive and to feel. Um, and then we just finished off Giving Tuesday. We yes. raised $25,000 in one day just by asking and talking about the specific needs of free arts. And we're heading into a crucial season where – you're an Arizona state resident, you can take advantage of a tax credit That's system right. that is looking at whatever liability you owe the state, you can give up to um, 1051 or 1051 if you're a couple or half of that if you're an individual um, and have that liability be directed to free arts um, and that comes off your tax bill. So the net to you is zero. The gain to free arts is everything. Mm -hmm. And so that's... Um, you know, it's both recognition of all of these prior years of us being able to receive that kind of funding from individuals. You don't, uh, you could be a, a longtime supporter or you could have just heard about it and be motivated mm -hmm. by the tax credit itself. That's okay. That's okay. We However, start our, we started our journey with free arts <laughs> in a variety of ways. Yes. And so talking about the 30th has been powerful. Talking about the achievement of our strategic vision so far, when we're talking about things like developing programs and moving statewide, it's intentional. It's not accidental. Mm -hmm. um, and we're moving forward with that. So on that note, that's 2023 and what we're proud of. Yes. I'm so excited for everything that is to come. 2023, it, it's a wrap. And I just thank you to everyone who's participated in this and who's just been a uh, uh, strong support for the work that we're doing, transforming these lives. Perfectly said. And to transition over to what we're hoping for for next year. Mm -hmm. So 2024 is going to be another important year for us. So let's start with where we're going with the conference. So we're the shifting conference. from the conference to symposium. Symposium time. And I, changing the shifting the name alone should just indicate how grand we're really hoping this is going to be. Um, you know, so much focus on 
not just what we do with programming, but who we're connecting with and um, even bringing in even more of the clinical piece, bringing more of the mentorship piece and just really growing our connections with everyone else and seeing how that's going to go even beyond Arizona, who we can bring in to be part of those conversations, to be um, those experts coming in and really giving um, what they can give to the space and sharing that space with them. So we're excited that we're leveling up what we want to do in terms of national and regional. Our discussion, our theme is inspiring creativity in mentoring. Mm -hmm. So mentoring is the center of where we are, relationship mm -hmm. building. And it's powered by the arts, the transforming power of the arts. So creativity is speaking toward that. We are also creating learning opportunities and partnerships with other agencies in similar work. So some of them might be mentoring specifically at an individual level. Uh, some will have some group models like we do. But what would be essential and different than any other learning opportunity around mentoring is that we're adding creative components and wanting to show people how that can be done, show people how it's mm -hmm. that's the impact, but also be inspired by it as well. So I'm excited about our, our guest speaker list. I'm excited about the workshop opportunities that we have coming because they're all going to balance around different ways mm -hmm. that we can be creative and building relationship that matters. So who's our audience for this? It's still artists. It's yeah. still our volunteers. It's also anyone who's working with children, teens, and young adults where mm -hmm. uh, you want to build healthy relationship that can be transformative in a lifelong capacity. Yeah. And that could be schools, other nonprofits. Mm -hmm. It can be individuals who are um, leading a scout group. All of these people will learn and gain something from their involvement in this. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, we'd love to continue, you know, leveling this up, offering this not only statewide, but nationally. Um, and so our symposium is on April 20th. Mm -hmm. It's a Saturday. Desert Willow Conference Center in Phoenix, very convenient near the airport. We're going to go from nine to four, one day conference in person. Um, and we're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to learn something important. So we'd love to see everyone there. So in case you didn't realize when we say who is it for, it's for you. It's for you. It's for your friends. It's for your family. It's for you. So come on, hoping to see everybody there. Last year, we did have some out-of-state affiliates who came. So I'm wondering who we'll, we'll have this time. Yep. So we're excited about that, and uh, we'd love to see you there. So that's one thing I'm excited about. Second is related to statewide. So that's not mm -hmm. only seeing what we do in Prescott and Yavapai, but thinking about what we're going to do in southern Arizona. And so mm -hmm. particularly in Tucson, we already know there's partners we work with now that are basically like, call us up and tell us when you're ready. So what does that mean? We're ready to build and looking into next year, um, weekly style mentoring programs where we're going to need volunteer mentors. And we're ready to train on site. We're also ready to train here and constantly to, to bring in those groups of uh, volunteer mentors. But Northern Arizona and Southern are focuses early on, particularly the Tucson area, as well as like now County, which is a little bit between us mm -hmm. and to the East. Um, so I'm really excited about what statewide expansion means there. Plus, as we've been talking along the way, we just tend to get more and more people excited. So as our capacity grows around this, we want to structure our, our requests for public support and funding. And so we want a statewide presence around who is supporting us financially. Um, and we know that every community has its own resources. And so we're looking to do that. And we're interested in talking to people who want us to help children in their area that have experienced, you know, in uh, out of home separation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I'm excited about there. And then if we could put our nerdy academic hat on for a second, <laughs> I'm excited about what we're, where we're going with data and evaluation. Mm -hmm. And we saw some great information recently here. We'll talk more about, about focus groups and landscape and who's doing what in and around the services that we do. But in 2024, we're going to have opportunities to start telling stories through data mm -hmm. that's coming as a multi-year evaluation. So we have an episode about this with Jay Lee Jensen from Indigo. Go check that out if you'd like to know more. But we are going to be talking more and more about how we know programs are effective. What are the actual experiences pre and post from being in a free arts program? How is that impacting connection? social anxiety, self-view, willingness to work with peers, willingness to engage with 
adults. Um, this kind of data is, we hope, proof positive that what we're doing here not only sounds nice, but it's effective. And it is uh, an important part of someone's return to well-being. So I'm excited about that. In particular, we have you know, camp information, professional artist series, and we're just beginning weekly mentoring weekly program. Mentor. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting there. And then I think these things combined with our collective work among other partners will help us inform what Free Arts does and says around advocacy in total, how we look about our relationships to those that are really looking at child development, child well-being, and doing the mm -hmm. best in communities, and where's Free Arts' role in helping that move forward. And so I know data and evaluation is important to you, but mm -hmm. I'm excited about it, even if it does involve spreadsheets and numbers. Yeah. But we can turn these into meaningful yeah. elements. I mean, that that's the great thing about it is that it doesn't always have to stay with, it, with um, the numbers, even though the numbers are extremely important. You know, you have the qualitative data as well. You have the themes that we're seeing, and that's going to give us a lot of insight into the success behind the work that we're doing. So... Even if, you know, you're not that much into the quantitative stuff, there's something in there for everyone to be able to understand the impact of our programs. All right. And to wind up with the last thing I'm really looking forward to for 2024 is that we hope to take what we do here in terms of training people in our community um, and not have it be a secret where mm -hmm. we are a trauma-informed provider. Uh, and we really believe that anyone working with others, particularly children who've been in this situation, but all children and teens, mm -hmm. need an, a recognition, an understanding of what's involved around traumatic experiences and what boosts resilience for young mm -hmm. people. So what we are going to develop over time, this podcast being one of those mechanisms, is ways to provide mm -hmm. those learnings, that opportunity for others to be able to shape their program in a trauma-informed way with the experience of free arts. So that is us going out outside of our volunteer base, maybe in schools, other nonprofits and community groups, and talking about the importance of trauma recognition, the importance of fostering programs that build resilience. And we are not shy. We are ready to come present, and we are looking at targeted ways to do that through other conferences and, and symposia that we might come in and speak at, uh, but we're also ready to work with any of the groups in our communities that can learn the same message that can take parts of it and either fuse in parts or replicate parts, right? We're not thinking mm -hmm. this is only something free arts can do. You know, healthy relationship, the pyramid that we all talk about, mm -hmm. it's for everyone. It definitely. And that's something we've already begun to do because people are really invested in free arts and invested in the work that we're doing. And we've already had those requests coming in, honoring those requests and doing those trainings and presentations. And then from there being invited to do more. And that just really is a testament into how much people truly believe in the work that we're doing. And the beauty about it is, is that we don't just tell you about it. We walk you through it, right? Yep. We're able to give you the opportunity to go through the artistic experience, go through that, um, that skill building, that self-efficacy building and see it on the other side because we can tell you it and that's cool. You'll know it. And then, you know, we, we can show you it and that's great because then you'll learn it. And then we can really engage you in it. And that's when you really take it with you and you can replicate it. Awesome. So on that note, a lot of things have happened in this last year. And we are so thankful for all the support. Mm -hmm. Those that give their time, their talent, and their treasure. It all sums up to be this great thing that so many people are proud of. And so I'm thankful for the opportunity to talk about what we did here in 2023. Not because we're just taking personal credit. Mm -hmm. We did this. This yes. whole group did this, and we'll need your support and help to do it. Uh, all the awesome things we have planned for next year. So, so on that note, um, we thank you so much for listening and watching this episode of Canvas of the Heart. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Canvas of the Heart. We'd love to hear your questions and feedback by email at hello at freeartsaz.org. You can find more information about Free Arts by visiting our website at freeartsaz.org. We'd like to thank the many individual and corporate donors and the hundreds of volunteers that make Free Arts programs possible. Take care and we will talk to you soon.